Welcome to Divine Way TV. This segment is about millionaire introductions, where we bring millionaires to you. Are you a millionaire? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm poor millionaire. I'm not a rich millionaire yet. Is there? Oh, that's a difference. That's the difference. Okay. Well, still looking for the billionaire. Well, our audience is just trying to make their first million dollars. So first one. The first million dollars. Well, good luck. Yes. <laughs> you know. So I hope you know. I want to get to know your story a little bit more. We can talk about where you're from, um, how did you, what you do for a living, and ultimately, how did you get started in real estate and how you started making money in real estate. So we want to share all that. What do you think? Well, it's a good question, actually. So, uh, first of all, my name is Ira. I'm from Russia. Ira, uh, what, what was your, your maiden name? I'm sorry, what was your... Where were you born and what was your name at birth? Is that your full name? Oh, no, okay. So I was born in uh, Leningrad, it's Soviet Union, mm -hmm. okay, many years ago, mm -hmm. before it's become Russia. Ah, okay. 1989, it was the end of the Soviet Union, and 1990, it was Russia, become Russia. Mm -hmm. So it was Leningrad, now it's St. Petersburg. Wow. So now, um, and my name is Irina. Mm -hmm. Petrovna Lukina. Wow, it's a beautiful name. Somewhere uh, out there, yes. there's a, a, a Russian billionaire who's saying, wow, who is she? Uh-huh, come over here. <laughs> <laughs> My cell phone number is. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, the real estate, basically in Soviet Union, I had, let's say, my mom died, she gave me a million bucks, mm -hmm. right? But I couldn't buy and I used to live in studio mm -hmm. with my mother, with my father. How old were you when mom your mom died? I was 17. 17 years old. So yeah. you're 17 years old, and is dad anywhere around? No, he died too. He died before mom? Yeah. Wow. So, um, so you're 17 years old, mom passes away. Do you have any siblings, brothers, sisters? No. no. I was you, alone. And you have a million dollars, and is it... Not U.S. dollar. Is it U.S. It was, dollars? It was a million rubles, which was uh, basically the salary of the normal human. It was 60 rubles per month, the salary. So just calculate, it's $720 uh, uh, per year. So multiply. person needs to work for 15 years. My mom was at, like in the black market, uh, uh, knew how to make money. Mom was a hustler, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow. So, and I uh, lived in ghetto and... Um, uh, Were there any black people in the Russian ghetto? Actually, I just saw one black person. <laughs> you saw one? One, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Nevsky Prospect, I saw one black person. Really? Yeah, and he touched my hand and I didn't, and I froze and I didn't know what to say. Oh my goodness, what, what were you feeling when, he, when this black man touched your hand? Uh, you, I didn't see him because he was behind me. <laughs> Hey, hold on. This sounds like a robbery. <laughs> is this a robbery? No, he was a student, I guess. Okay, he was a you student. He had a student, so lots of students, yes. Well, okay, yeah. so he but was But I not saw only once. Okay, one time. One time. That was, okay. Yeah. Okay, let's and get I back to And I story. fell in love, actually. Okay, shout out to the young man. That was a great move. He, he grabbed your hand, huh? changed your life. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, and my, uh, before my mom died, she said, Ira, uh, Irina and Ira, it's the same name. Uh, get out of the country, no matter what, no matter how, this is my last wish, get out of the country. So I had to figure out how to get out of the country, but because my mom was very strict, mm -hmm. I tried to spend that million rubles because I bought, well, I bought a car. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the real estate, long story short. Yeah, yeah. Bought a car, bought brand new furniture, uh, fur coats, diamonds, blah, blah, blah. You, you did what a normal 17-year-old would do with a million dollars. Right. And I start throwing big parties because and I wanted to buy a real estate. Mm -hmm. But the law back then was um, you cannot because it was only six square meters per person and I had 18. So you're not eligible to buy bigger place. It was frustrating. Wow. So the law was, a, was against you being able to build wealth in real estate? Yes. Mm, because it's given by the government, mm -hmm. and 
it was kind of like black market would be involved, but I would have to uh, be married, have two children, and uh, then I could be eligible oh, to purchase mm -hmm. a larger real estate. The criteria, I see, the laws yeah. and the criteria to qualify to buy more real estate meant you needed to marry, have two kids. Correct. Okay, got it, got it. So I didn't know how to spend money, so I had big parties. People still remember me there. <laughs> <laughs> I could buy big restaurants and cabaret and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it was fun. Could you invest in restaurants it's, or was the laws no, really limited you, there you too? Can, uh, you can buy only... Well, you couldn't even buy a car, but because my uh, first husband, when I got married. And how old were you when you got married? 18. So, okay, so now a, you're a 17-year-old with a million bucks. By 18, you're married. Married, yes. Okay, wow. Uh, Did he have a million dollars too? or? No, his father was um, uh, admiral, of, admiral of the trade, international trade. And, uh, so you married into money. He had money. Yeah. Okay. So and um, and that's how I could buy a car or mm -hmm. furniture without waiting in line and rules avoid the rules because he could get anything, I but see. not real estate, anything else. Okay. So friends comes and friends go. When money are there, a lot of friends appears around you. All of a sudden, money are gone, and fuck. Sh yeah, I you can say own? fuck shit, whatever okay. you want to say. It's fuck shit. <laughs> I cannot, and I, I have zero. Okay, you spent all the money. I spent all the money. And when the money's gone, the friends are gone? Friends are gone, and um, divor a divorced husband. Wow, you went, uh, you went like from here. To... Right, so I was sitting in the chair, and I'm thinking, what the heck I'm going to do? Yes, what are you going to do? That's what I, I want to know. I don't want to be a prostitute, because what I was belonging um, well, it's a big prostitution there. Oh, I mean, you go and you, make, you, you can make a living. You make a living, it. right? But I knew lots of prostitutes. Shout out to all the prostitutes in Russia, the <laughs> communists. What was it? <laughs> was it still Russia? Was it Russia yet, or so, still the? It was so, still Soviet, Soviet Union. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I was a little bit above that because I had a lot of friends on the black market, and uh, I learned how to make money in and other I, ways. Uh, other ways. Yeah, yes. yeah. So I start making money. Uh, and, uh, Keep drinking, by the way. You, you, your story, it's very interesting. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> mm. So, and then um, uh, I start making a lot, well, I start making a lot of money on selling my pictures to Finnish people, to Finnish guys. Photos, or are you doing art at the time? <laughs> are you selling nude uh, photos? I'm on art. No, no, no. Okay. Well, when I was learning uh, Finnish language, mm -hmm. I discovered that on the last page of the newspaper, uh, there is advertising. That's how I learned, uh, that's how my teacher was making me to read because he said, forget about the grammar, you won't be able to get it, mm -hmm. you have to memorize it. And I go, what is this advertising? Mm -hmm. And I go, okay, so this is a real estate. And I go, how people buy real estate there in Finland? They go, Pretty much, they live on the big farms and big places, and uh, they can do whatever they want. I go, well, I want to go to Finland, and I want to get uh, maybe like fiancé from Finland. Yes. But I cannot because you have to have fiancé visa. Otherwise, ah. you cannot get out of the country. That's like there's a show called 90 Day Fiancé, right? Yes. So you were, you were trying to find one of those guys to... Exactly. All right, so before 90 Day Fiancé... You were trying to find your, your 90 days. Uh, well, hey, I discovered that um, show basically when I was 18. Well, I was actually, I was 19 years old, right? And um, so I asked my um, teacher, I go, well, can I write to those people because it's out of country? He said, first of all, you have to make a good impression and take good pictures mm -hmm. of yourself. So... And I still have those pictures, and those pictures was on my wedding in the United States. <laughs> Can we show those photos? Our audience is curious. They want to know what those photos look like. We're going to put them up somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going like, to have to share those photos, okay? okay? All right, okay. all right. So those, so those photos... Those photos got me out of the country. Wow. So Damn. I sent the photos and um, received, I would say like in two weeks, I received about 200 invitations. 
to get out the country. To get out of country. Can guys do this too, or is this guys can't? It's hard for guys to get out of the country. They can't. I don't know. Well, no, for guys it's really hard, of course. But for women. For women, oh, it's like it's also hard. But no one else knew about. I was just discovered by learning other languages. Mm -hmm. And um, so that gets you out of the country. It's got me out of the yeah. country, and that's how I made money. I sold all these invitations to my friends and also to the prostitutes. I got the money. I went to Hermitage, got introduced to young, uh, famous um, art people. I bought, I bought the art. And um, wow! So no, I saved the art because I was. Um, in Finland, what they interested in, they interested in caviar, beluga caviar, and uh, vodka. Mm -hmm. So I go to Finland, I bring um, like 20 bottles of uh, vodka and like 10 ca uh, cans of caviar. On the train station, I met the guy, and I go, uh, buy it. Oh, though, um, I had to hide caviar. And I found a Finnish couple uh, in a restaurant wagon, wagon, or how it's spelled, um, like in a, a, on, a tr on a train. You have a special restaurant. Oh, So okay. people sit there. So I go over there. I said, listen, here's the... <coughs> in the fancy, this is the yeah. fancy part of the train, right? Right. Money, okay. So I go, uh, couple, um, I go, do you want caviar? They said, of course. I go, give me money after we arrive, we cross the border. Mm -hmm. Here's the five cans or 10 cans, whatsoever, I don't remember. And um, you'll give me money after. Yeah. But the vodka, I mean, I like, hide it, blah, 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 in, uh, in my coupe. Because alcohol is illegal there too? Yes. Wow. Yes. They, have, they can buy only one bottle per day, and after 8 or 9 o'clock, you cannot buy um, any alcohol. Damn. Let's so okay. I go over there. I sold everything. I went to Sweden to visit my friend. So for, for our audience... You know, they're trying to f find a way to make their first million dollars in real estate. And here you are telling a story of how you got out of the Soviet Union. Right. So then, uh, well, with the real estate, you have to understand where you want to live, uh, how you want to manage, and uh, where you want to invest. Because you have money. Okay, in Soviet Union, I couldn't invest. And I didn't really want to invest because um, the economy goes up and down, up and down. In Finland, I didn't want to invest because they are really not welcome the foreigners mm -hmm. for the they investment that they, they okay. don't welcome. I see. In Sweden, eh, um, very uh, high tax on everything. Oh, high taxes, okay. So okay. you buy a house, you pay 50-70% taxes, My goodness. you go mm -hmm. to work, it's 50-70%. I mean, that's a really nice place to live. Mm -hmm. They will take care of for the rest of your life. Oh, right. They have, don't they have free, um, what is it, health care and things like yeah. that? Mm -hmm. But you pay for it with your taxes. That's, yes, that's universities and everything, blah, 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 it's all free. And um, so, and then I, I decided, like, hey, I cannot invest here, I cannot invest here, I cannot buy anything, I, can, I, 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 don't, um, I don't see myself living there. So I came back to um, St. Petersburg, okay. well, Leningrad back then, and I brought a bunch of stuff, goods, and I sold it again. Mm -hmm. I have money, I have paintings, and I was chased by um, KGB, on the Nevsky Prospect, because they saw a well-groomed <laughs> young lady with a big bag, and my other friend who met me on Nevsky Prospect wanted to purchase everything, so I was chased by KGB to what? stop me because That's it wasn't legal. That's like the illegal. FBI, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, do the feds know? Hey, are they watching? What if they're watching right now? Do we fuck them? <laughs> <laughs> so and Ooh, now. Is... So one car started uh, chasing us, and we were running and running and running and running, and I was like, I cannot run anymore, but I see the police is behind, and the car is right here. I open the door, and two Italian guys go, do you need a ride? I go, shit, yes. So I met the Italian guy who sent me an invitation to go to Rome. This is after they saved, got you away from the police? Yes. From the KGB? Yeah. So now they're like, hey, do you want to go to Rome? Yeah. I go, of course, yes. Okay. So I got an invitation to go to Rome. I got a bunch of um, um, military watch, 
pilot floats, mm -hmm. which like were they military guys or were they like oh no uh, no no I, I, no those Italian guys not like uh, tourists like oh, okay their, their own stuff in Italy and Rome, and um, so they got you out of the country again yeah to Italy, so how do you get to U United States from Italy from Italy okay. I got a bottle of vodka that we're drinking on right now oh actually um, I didn't want to be married to that guy and he kicked me out of the apartments, okay? So I didn't know where to go, but I sold a key and I knew that he has another house. Wait, you sold the key? Yeah. What's a key? Like the key, the door key. Oh, okay, I thought you meant a, like kilo. No, the door key. Okay, you sold the door key, all right. Went back to the apartments, broke mm -hmm. in, and uh, leave it there. Whatever money left, I just got a bottle of vodka and uh, I said to myself, I'm not gonna go back. Though, if they would depart me, I would go to straight to Siberia for 15 years. That's prison. like uh, like prison? Yeah, because it's political escape, yes. Oh my gosh. Wow, I have a refugee. Mm -hmm. Our Divine mm -hmm. Way TV, first refugee. Mm -hmm. All right, so from Italy, you find yourself in the United States. Yes. I drank a lot of vodka cold. I didn't want to go to the United States, though. You didn't want to come no. here? No. Okay. Because I wanted to go to Australia and marry to the billionaire. Okay, okay you wanted that billionaire. Yeah, billionaire. Okay. If, I, if you are in Australia right now and a billionaire call me. So I don't care how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that's my goal. So anyway, um, got through um, political asylum, got political asylum, flew to, oh, yeah. Um, On the train to Finland, one lady, one old Finnish lady said, Ira, you must go to America. You must go, you're never ever gonna be able to live in any country but America. America is the best country in the world. Oh, shout out to America. Yeah. So, so and you, I, how did you make it though? How did you get here? Did you have another 90 day fiance? No, American. I went to American embassy and I said that uh, my life in danger. Okay. Wink, wink. Wink, wink. My life is in danger. I need to get out of here. Yeah. Which you were in Switzerland? Ro Rome. Rome at the time. Rome at the time, uh, an American embassy, yes. So they let you go. They gave you the, the visa? They gave the me passport? the political asylum. Mm -hmm. So, and um, it was on the day when we had, a, um, San Francisco had an earthquake. Oh, that's 1988 or something like that. 1989, October 6th. You, you'll never forget that date. 1990, 1989. 1989. Wow, yeah. I, was, I was 12 years old. Oh, makes me old. <laughs> I was a baby, and you were, you were trying to survive. Yes. So you made it. They gave you the, the papers. You made it to America. Yes. Your first day in America, what do you do? What the fuck I got into? I arrived to Detroit, him try me. Detroit, him, Michigan? Michigan, yes. Wait, hold up. Were you still a bright blonde like you are right now? Yeah. So you were a blonde-headed girl in Detroit, Michigan with a Russian accent. I couldn't, I didn't speak English though. At all? At all. So what did you end up, what was, tell me about that first day in Detroit. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> and <laughs> did you see another black guy? <laughs> I was. So That's all you saw. I was cleaning the tables after them. So you, did you find a waitress job? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're waiting tables, and then all of a sudden, fast forward to. <laughs> to you, you got married again, didn't you? No. No, I got what? What? Shit hole is the Detroit. I have to get out of here. Wait. What? Okay. So now you're. <laughs> Is oh, hold on a second. It Our was audience, winter. It was winter. It was New Year, and it's well. You're from the Soviet and, Union, and, so it's, you know what winter well, looks still, like. Still, and uh, you know, I it's a big difference to have to live in a big city. And, okay, so you grew up in San Francisco, and all of a sudden they send you to Detroit, Hamtramck, Michigan, where they said, "Sorry, you cannot go outside the house after five o'clock. It's dangerous." And oh, you were okay. You were in the hood. I was in the hood. Okay, gotcha. and then uh, my. Uh, bedroom is on the first floor and I mean bedroom on the first floor and a shower uh, in the basement so in order to go to get shower 
yeah. you have to go to basement, to the basement. Mm. Go outside the house, go to the basement, take a shower, then go up upstairs. Is this like a like a shared room type? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. everybody has a room, shared right. bathroom. Right. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So, so how in the hell did you okay, so then all of a sudden you find your prince charming? No. Not yet? No. No. <laughs> I, I just um, I bribed one um, Polish guy. He was going to Las Vegas, and I said, I want to go to Arizona because I know someone from Arizona. Mm -hmm. And uh, three days and, and four nights, we were driving the car. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know how I got driver's license how? in Michigan? I go to DMV, and I don't speak and I don't read English. I just guessed the answers. What? So <laughs> I'm freaking lucky. I think my mom is watching after me. I just guessed. You guessed on your, your driver's, uh, your yeah, driver's uh, test. test. Yes, and then the driving test, because I was driving my car on the snow, obviously. You were good. Well. I was good. And I had a very um, African-American lady, big one, like, I don't know, like really big one. Yeah. Uh, 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 the instructor, not the instructor, but whatever, you know, just to put yeah, it. And she looked at me, and she goes, fucking stop right now. I knew how what to say. I knew I knew fucking. You knew what fuck it meant. I, I, I cannot. I you can curse. Stop, I can man. curse in any languages. Yes. And uh, and I knew what stop is. And she said, "Let me get out of the car. You passed, okay?" I go, "Okay." So they gave me license. What? Shout out to that big black lady that gave you the. She was just. She I saved don't want your to, life. Uh, she's like, yeah. And yeah, you saved really you nice. saved her life, and she saved your life. Right. So. So she was like, here, you passed, go on. You got your driver's license. And Get the heck out of Michigan. You got out of Michigan and... Drove to uh, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And um, you know that um, movie with um, John Belushi who died, um, um, American, Par what American Party? Um, what's that movie? Um, I know... I th uh, the animal, 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 animal House! house. Animal, animal House, house. Yes. yes, yes. That's the movie I was watching before I left... Uh, Russia, and I said, I want that kind of wow. party. Okay, so the party girl that was in the Soviet Union still wanted to party the same way. Of course. Okay, so my goal was wear the short skirt, find a guy who's a manager, and wear high heels, and not so, to work at all. So you're plotting already to find the, the, that rich dude that's yes. out there. You're yes. already plotting. Yes. Do women do this? All the time. God. So. Damn. Okay, I'm learning. Let, let me. I'm gonna shut the fuck up. I'm gonna listen. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, so you, go ahead. And now, um, I got the job. Oh, I got the job at um, hotel, uh, some, some hotel in um, Arizona, and they said, "Now you're gonna be working in hospitality." So I came home to my friend, and I go like, "Listen." I don't know what kind of hospital they have in a hotel, <laughs> but I'm going to be working at the hospital, <laughs> at the hotel. I don't know what I'm going to do there. So you still haven't mastered the English language yet. You find your, you think you're going to be a, a hospital employee at a hotel. Correct. All right. Okay. So I come into the hospital, and guess what? They escort me to their uh, breakfast buffet, and they said, you're going to be cleaning the tables or serve the breakfast buffet. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, you know, whatever. And I had another like, six guys right next to me. I go, yeah. guys, I think it's time for you to work and I will be supervising you because in my heart, I'm a supervisor. You're, an, yeah, you're a boss. I'm a boss. Yes. So, and they couldn't understand my language, but I was just ignoring, didn't do anything. And they hated me. <laughs> <laughs> they, because you, know, you were telling them what to do. Yeah, yeah. And you go all here, all making go the there, go money. there. Yes, you do this. Yes. Yes. And uh, one guy actually invited me to the party. I go, yes, I'm going to Animal House. You're going to Animal House. I'm going to Animal House. <laughs> so guess what? You know, went to Animal House. Yes. Didn't happen because Americans are pretty boring. Uh, Y'all yes. hear that? Y'all yep. need to turn up a little mm -hmm. more. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I never, well, yeah, boring. So, but I met my future husband there, and I asked him the question, um, what do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. He goes, I'm a manager. I go, I'm going to marry you. 
Just like that. Just like that. Are we talking about the husband, uh, what's his name? Tracy? Heidman. Mm -hmm. So it was Tracy, now, now people are enjoying our story here, but they want to know how in the hell did you get involved okay. with real estate. So Trace, you ended up marrying Tracy. And he was involved in, uh, uh, he was working for father, and the father in the real estate, he was working all his life, managing big real estate in Arizona, big um, mobile home park properties, uh, uh, RV, well, back then we didn't have RVs back, but mobile home parks, mm -hmm. houses, whatsoever, uh, shopping centers, and he was investing heavily in real estate back then, which is, for me, was absolutely incredible uh, opportunity to learn what this is about. So you married in, so y'all are married already. Now you're married. Did y'all mm -hmm. marry in Arizona? Uh-huh. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So now you're married to... Um, A person who is not interested to grow, but interested to work for the father, mm -hmm. but the father is amazingly smart person, and I always like to hear the stories from older people who's older than me. They have experience. And uh, one lady actually on the plane also told me, go to California, uh, buy something, because in California, prices will never, ever, ever, and the real estate will go down. So I met a lots of, a lots of um, nice, um, successful people. Mm -hmm. I never like to say wealthy because wealth comes with success, my opinion, mm -hmm. and hard work. And it's not coming from the sky. So I came to the United States with 300 bucks in my pocket, and now I'm in Newport Beach, working two jobs, supporting my husband, American husband, who goes to the law school. Yes, shout out to Tracy, going to law school. And but his parents had money, right? So Right, but you, his parents have money. But they don't give it. But they don't give it. I see. They make okay. you earn it. They want you to earn it. Whatever. You know how parents are. Um, they, don't want, they don't want to do anything. They want you to learn the hard way. No, they said I'm a gold digger and I'm a... It's a you want to make money. And that yeah, I, came for, I, I came from the... Um, um, the slums? Green, green card the and green blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, so they didn't like you. They didn't like me much. But my father-in-law loved me and still loves me. But the mother didn't like you. No. No, okay. Who, who likes... Nobody, mother-in-law's never daughter, like, yeah, they don't want their right. baby. Okay, I got that. So anyway, and uh, so when we came here to San Francisco, uh, again, uh, I opened the Yellow Pages and I said, where's the best place to live in San Francisco? And they said, Pacific Heights. Mm -hmm. I go like, now I'm going to live on Pacific Heights then. That was kind of like Eddie Murphy in Coming to America when he spun the globe. I don't know if you saw that movie. But he said uh, it went to, he was looking for a beautiful woman. And he's, in Af he's living in Africa. And it's about zebra half, right? It, it, lands, <laughs> it lands on Queens. Uh -huh. And he said, oh, Queens, New York. Must it must be amazing. Is that, that's kind of like what you did. And he showed up in Queens, but it wasn't. It wasn't beautiful, but you you picked Pack Heights, Pacific Heights. Yes. And so, are you renting an apartment there? Uh huh. Okay, and you living a good life. Well, was working. Mm -hmm. uh, but and but, waiting. But let's fast forward. How in the hell did you and Tracy now? Who qualified for the loan on the first property? In okay, so we discovered here. Um, uh, because he's got some kind of small job here in Alameda, and he said, you know that Harbor Bay Island, which is Bay Farm Island, it's such a nice, beautiful place on the water, and it's a quiet community. And um, I go, well, I like, I don't have, well, he goes like, we're going to have kids one day, why don't we settle down there, let's go check it out. I loved San Francisco lifestyle, and I really want, well, San Francisco, <laughs> check this out. Pacific Heights, right? Yes, yes. Uh, clay in California. Corner. Oh, that's a beautiful street. California Street in clay. clay. Okay. So th that's where I lived. Okay. Okay. So on the second floor, third floor, I wanted to get, because I said, I'm not going to Alameda for the older people. Let's buy something in San Francisco. <sighs> it just drives me crazy right now that your friends and your relatives are so fucking ignorant and they don't want to help young people who has brain like me. So there's a lesson in this to our audience. You had an idea to invest in San Francisco. 
What yes. is, what did you, what were, what, do you remember what the price was at the time? Yes, I remember, remember oh, of course, I, I'm, I'm, I like, I have a nightmare right now because thinking, what the heck, people don't listen. Now, 280,000 for three bedroom apartments. Condominium, it's a condominium, condo because they're selling condo, them, right? Yes, okay. condo. But apartment style, I understand what you're saying. So 280,000. 280,000. What is that worth today, you think? Well, like maybe four million at least. It's big, it's huge. It was four huge. million dollars. Okay, so that next one. Yes. Do you know Lafayette Park, that square Lafayette Park where. Um, you Lombard, know, the Wiggly Street? No, 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 no. Lafayette Park, where is Pacific Heights, okay. like on the top. The yes. It's the very top with the park right now. Yes. Okay, there is a white building, five floors building. Mm -hmm. Sits like a boat uh, on the park. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of engaged inside that park halfway. Mm -hmm. Okay? Guess what? what? I go, all right, let's buy. It was for sale on a last on the top floor with the um, um, what kind of with, with the have? roof with oh. the garden it had a rooftop okay rooftop yes five hundred thousand that was a lot of money then though <sighs> please it's I mean you work but I mean, come on it's there are loans and uh, uh, first time buyer shit. Yeah, there were, okay, uh, there were lots of ways to leverage. Ways to get, well, to get I, I, I could get, I could get, I, I, okay, I qualified, not my husband because he didn't work, I worked blah, blah, blah. Two jobs, yeah. Two jobs. I qualified for $205,000. So but this is $500,000 condo. My, yeah, I had a lot of friends, Russian um, oligarchs, and like, Millionaires, billionaires, okay? They can help you. Just get, get together, like mm -hmm. partnership, mm -hmm. okay? Just get investment. Wow. And no one believed me that they go like, oh, it's expensive city. Never, I go, it's real estate in California, no matter what, you just have to wait, you're young. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you are 75 years old, forget about it. But mm -hmm. listen, but you were young you, if you are 30 years old, come yeah. on, give me a break. And, um, uh, so, and it was a long time on the market. I go, look at this. It's, three, it's 360 degrees, the whole floor. It's like, I don't you, know. You like, have a whole view. The whole view, 360, 360 degrees. view in San Francisco. It's a, the whole floor. For $500,000. Yes. What it's do you like, think that is worth like eight, today? It's like eight, like eight bedrooms. Or so. Oh, my God. What a guess. Just guess. I, it's never going to be for sale anymore. Okay. Wow. Wow. So, you, you had the opportunity, and it was sitting on the market. This is a lesson to our audience because... You can't listen to people when you're when you when you believe in something a hundred and ten percent like you did. Yes. Everybody's telling you no. You well, they, they're looking at the Russian girl, blonde, stupid. I was hundred pounds. Who the fuck is she? I, but I finished um, three universities. Okay, and no one wants to listen. And I see. And I listen always people older than me. Like listen people who's twenty years older than you. They have experience. Don't. Whatever you're the same age, they can be, oh, let's get uh, uh, bit Bitcoin, Bitcoin, fuck shit, whatever. You know, maybe it's good, it's maybe bad, blah, blah, blah. But real estate, it's solid, okay? Yeah, it's yeah. freaking solid. It's never will go. People fighting, what people told me, that people, that there is so much available land per person in the United States, and you buy a piece of United States. You are... Bitcoin, it's not a piece of United States because it comes and it goes. Mm -hmm. piece, of, piece of the United States, it's a land. I mean, right now it's popular condos, blah, 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 and still it's a piece of land because your condo is staying on the piece of land. The third attempt to my friends was at the same year, before actually I moved to Alameda, like fuck it, you know, I cannot afford anything because everything like 200,000, you cannot buy for 200 back then already. And uh, so the... Um, um, you ended up buying in Alameda, right? Where did you buy first in Alameda? Well, just a second. Okay. The, uh, the building on Nob Hill was on market for 750,000. Next to the um, um, 
Nob Hill, you know Nob Hill, oh, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the first ground floor was um, commercial. It was uh, dry cleaning and uh, laundry place, mm -hmm. the whole first floor. Then four other floors were, on each floor was uh, three apartments. Okay. Each apartment was one bedroom, two bedroom. Mm -hmm. So four floors. So 12 apartments. Yes. A rooftop again, beautiful view, 360 view, and the garden. 750,000. Again, that's a lot of money then, but today it's probably I, I said, listen, because with the people who has a lot of money in Newport Beach, my friends, and, uh, and they're looking for the investments. You said this is a great this investment. This is a great investment. They didn't I, listen. I, I can live on one floor, you can live on whatever, the rest we can rent. Uh, commercial property make a lot of money. It mm -hmm. will pay itself for the whole fucking uh, mortgage. Yes. The, though the, uh, the rent control, it's just you had to... You can only go uh, up a certain out, amount yes. because there were tenants there probably, no? It was tenants there, but you have to remodel the place, mm -hmm. kick them out, live there for a year. So this was the third investment third. opportunity that you showed to people and they passed. No one believed me. The little 100-pound blonde doesn't know what she's talking mm -hmm. about. And today that $700,000 investment is probably worth... Well... Just guess. Well, how much building, the whole building... The whole building. The whole building. Not only the land, the building the too. The building, yeah. yeah. It's no probably, kill. guess. Well, like 15 million maybe. 15 million dollars, okay. So another lesson in this story is that you had the vision already and people didn't trust your vision. And so as a result, you left, millions of dollars were left on the table. But well, yeah, uh, it's too, like. Well, I mean, you were 30 something years old then and now it's gone crazy. But let's, for our audience out there that are, that are trying to follow the story, um, you bought your first property in Alameda. In Alameda, and how much did you pay for that? I paid two hundred eighteen thousand. And what's what street was this one on? Story? Uh, it was on Fur Avenue. It was condo. Oh, the condo by uh -huh. uh, by Safeway. Uh huh. Okay, that was your first one. Yes. Okay, and then how did what did that investment opportunity do for you? And then what what was your next move after that? Okay, so. I figured out we have a seven-year-old cycle, seven years old like cycle. Like a market cycle? Yeah. Okay. So the cycle, uh, so the condo from 218, actually in four or five years, uh, because I had the first kid, it went up to 485,000. In a few years? Yeah. Okay. From 218 to 400 something. So now... I'm thinking, why don't we sell that and mm -hmm. buy something else? But I don't want to sell first. I want to buy something because we already start working for the high tech, making like 300 grand a year. And I have money, have cash, it's land. I don't know what to do with money. Yes. Okay. So put it in real estate again. Put it in real estate. Yeah, only mm -hmm. real estate. Uh, though, my husband said, why don't we invest in some high tech um, Blah blah blah. Did so he invested Tesla? high tech, like, like uh, by a uh, like stock, stock, like, yeah, stock. Yeah. And uh, when he he took my two hundred grand and he lost in one day. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. We need to tell that story. Hold up. So he took the two hundred thousand dollars that you had and you were prepared to invest in real estate because some people invest in the right stock, Tesla, Apple, and they make. Millions of dollars. No, you, you, he, what did he do with the money? It was just the beginning of the IT era. Okay, okay, so this is like around 2000. Whatever. Yeah. He, what did he invest in? Do you remember? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He invested. He lost like right away. I go like, fuck, that's 200 grand cash gone and I, I could buy something else in, in real estate. In one day, yeah. 200 grand is gone in the gone. real estate market. Right. Not real estate. Um, I mean, in, in uh, yeah. the stock market. Stock market. So, but I still have money, and I still make a lots of money. Mm -hmm. I would make like 15 grand every two weeks, right? And um, I go, I have to invest. Mm -hmm. And I start, we start looking for the house. He said, now I'm going to listen to you. You know how? Oh, even, yeah, even he learned the lesson. The, house, the husband doesn't listen, right? He's like, oh, you're stupid. You're a woman. A woman is not a human, right? <laughs> Well, now there's, you know, thank God we've come a long way where, you know, where people are changing their perspective. 
And okay, yes, right. Yeah, so uh -huh. shout out to that. Sure, but okay. So now uh, I start shopping on, I mean, on the Bay Farm mm -hmm. because I just want to buy here. I yes. love the place. And everything you have to beat, make a so there are multiple offers, I multiple, mean, multiple bids. on multiple, the multiple bids, and it's like ridiculous. It's like from 480, it goes to the five to 600. And I go like, you know what? I'll sit on it because it will go down. And in a year or two, I'll buy what I want, wherever I want, in Bay Farm. Mm -hmm. You're saving money in the meantime. In the meantime, I'm saving money, and I remodel my place mm -hmm. because it was a piece of crap inside out yes so it was state-of-the-art place after broke the um, uh, walls mm -hmm. rebuild the kitchen i mean everything yeah. i invested i invested maybe about like seventy thousand back then it was pretty good for the uh, uh, to remodel yeah, yeah. and it was hundred one thousand eight hundred square feet place mm -hmm. uh, perfect my friend so waiting two years the prices are not going down they're only going up. Going up. Uh -huh. Okay. So and I said, you know what? Let me see what I can do. My friend, and I, I, I told my husband, let's, let's go for the house, mm -hmm. big house. Yes. Not kind of big house. Okay. So one big house came on market in a sweet road over mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. It's basically, what is it? Um, 2,850 square feet. Huge house. It was Huge a big house. house. Yeah, yeah. For yeah California. remember, right? You and still went there. Yeah. And the uh, front yard, backyard, everything is great. Um, my girlfriend was going through divorce, and she said she, uh, she doesn't want to put on market. Uh, if, you, if I'll pay a million bucks cash, mm -hmm. I go, okay, I'll pay you a million bucks. Yes. So I know that it's already on the plate. Don't sell anything where you leave until you go forward with something. Because if I'm buying for the high price, mm -hmm. I'll sell my stuff for the high price too. Mm -hmm. And actually, my place in two years was I was holding up went from 485 to 625 so yeah if there's a way that's another lesson if you can hold on to your real estate in California try to hold on but some people have to use that money to buy the next spot correct but you didn't need to because you were having you had good income with your job correct you buy another huge house you keep the townhouse and now you buy this new house for a million bucks. Yes. And and then how did you end up on the, the next house with the water view? So um, then. You rented out the townhouse, I, I assume. No, right? no, no. Mm -hmm. I sold it for 625. You sold it. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a year later, prices went down. Ah, okay. And I bought the same place like this, but closer to the, to the water for 485. Wow. So you, you went back to the neighborhood and bought it when the market adjusted. Correct. And then it went back up again, right? Again, I made 200 grand. Well, okay. Uh, well, Your timing was great. Yeah. Well, I'm an old woman, so. Uh, now, while I'm living on Sweet Road, mm -hmm. I see the house of my dream basically on the market for 1.6. 1.6 million, the house of your dreams. Yeah. On the water view, views of San Francisco, everything. Yes. Yes. So, and it's um, uh, the community, but I mean, like uh, the association has no rules. So mm -hmm. I, can, I can paint my house in pink and no one, <laughs> and I can say fuck off. Okay. Okay. Now, I go to that house because I'm here at the Sweet Road for a million bucks still new, and I go, like, I can afford for 1.6. I make crazy fucking money. Mm -hmm. um, see how smart I am? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that house uh, was on the market only for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And the owner decided to take the house off the market. Oh, okay. This, okay. So, so now your dream house, you think, is gone. Gone, yes. Okay. So I said to myself, I'll wait for that particular spot as long as I can, mm -hmm. but I'll live in this. Uh, on Sweet Road, yeah. On Sweet Road, it's, it's a nice, nice home. Place, nice yeah. Home, right next to the ferry, water, and the lagoon. Uh, then, time goes by, uh, probably like, I would say, three, four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw, well, I went to Caribbean. Oh, by, uh, uh, during that time, mm -hmm. because the kids were really little, and we used to go to um, Hawaii all the time. Mm -hmm. I decided to buy a house in Hawaii. 
Okay, so you, you missed out on your dream house opportunity, but you went and bought in Hawaii. In Hawaii. Okay. So I bought two houses. Did that do well for you too? Um, what, how do you compare Hawaii and, and California in terms of investment? Uh, no, California is so far is only one state where you can invest. In, mm. uh, I would believe mm. no other. Uh, no other place. No other places. Okay. I mean, right now, with California, uh, a lot of people moving out of California. Stupid. <laughs> I, I, you know, I agree with that as well. But, you know, California has become a harder, more expensive taxes. You can have a, a bigger home, better quality of life. You know people better, but, but the weather, taxes. you can't beat the weather here. You can't beat the weather. So, Cal so to your story, Hawaii, investing in Hawaii, you didn't, didn't lose money. I didn't lose money. And I look at the perspective that you have kids uh, and you travel there six times a year. You spend it on um, hotels and blah, 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 expensive. Yeah. And um, uh, though I made a big mistake in Hawaii, I bought on a high. Uh, and it took probably 10 years to, to get back and above. make money. I see. Okay. So it, it, Hawaii investment was a longer investment play. Had you cashed out in Hawaii five years from the time you purchased, Just you, last, might, last you would year, have lost money. Last year, last year, yeah. the prices jumped up. Okay. And I go, this is time to get out of the Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I got sick and tired of the Hawaii. So, you know, when you go to the same restaurant every single day. Yeah, that's rich people problems. Yeah. They, they, they're trying to... Ah, okay, so, no, don't invest in Hawaii. Trust me. All right, so now fast forward your dream house you missed out on. How did you I find will, it? Um, okay, so I recession. Was, we hit the Great Recession, right? 2008, 2007. Seven years. So it was eight years ago now already. Seven okay, years. 2012. We're still coming out of the recession, and prices weren't too crazy. I think on uh, some of the properties, prices are very like, stable, mm -hmm. and um, but you have to play the game with the buyers. I mean, with the sellers. So the lady, um, um, I saw right before, well, I was just browsing um, on a website and I'm like, oh shit, my the dream house is um, available, again. available now. Uh -huh. And I called my real estate agent. I said, listen, go, are we going to give us, uh, an offer? Mm -hmm. So, and I said to my husband, because he doesn't like to invest in real estate again. So I go, listen. Wait a second. Tracy, let me talk to your husband, Tracy. Tracy. So you've seen all the decisions that she's making and real estate continues to win. For years, you have a resume now. You have a track record. Every decision that you made, made money in real yes. estate. But yet you bring another opportunity and Tracy's like, no. Nah. Ah, it's a lot of money to spend, uh, blah, blah, blah. I go, this is not a spending, this is investment. I like Tracy, by the way. I met him, great guy. Yes. But our audience is wants, they want to hear your story about how, what real estate ended up doing for you. So the, your dream home is available. Tr your husband is not agreeing with you at the time. Okay, I think here right now we're talking about coming to US, $300 and have a In really firm mindset on real estate. Mm -hmm. And now, um, blah, 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 my house, dream house here, I'm trying to negotiate. So, and I will, of, of course, you know, you have to give in to your husband and sometimes say, okay, let's make an offer and kind yeah. of play a game, like, hey, just to get my way. Uh, I go, how much? He goes, I'm not going to buy it for 1.6. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, actually, price. 1.3 or something. Oh, like no, no, one, no, it was 1.6. Yes, one, okay. Okay. And uh, he goes, okay, let's give an offer. I was almost shit in my pants when he said, Eight hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> so he cut the price in half almost. He yes. said, "Offer them eight hundred fifty thousand." Because he wanted to hear, "No way, Jose, and you just go away. Ira, go away. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. we we didn't get the uh, house." Yes. So my <laughs> real estate agent, she goes, "Are you sick?" Are you, like, your real estate like, agent was embarrassed to su even submit this. Yeah, I go, just, just, I go, just, just submit it. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, you submit the offer. What comes back? <laughs> Are you sick? <laughs> <laughs> so, even the seller was like, You need some medication. I'm not accepting. I want 1.6 million. You offered me 850,000. What did you end up agreeing on? Okay. <laughs> Uh, 1.3. 1.3. You got it for 1.3, that big house mm -hmm. on the water. Mm -hmm. 
And what year was that that you closed on the home? What, do you remember? Seven years ago. Seven or eight, something like that. Okay, so that home that you purchased, our audience can't wait for this story. You found your dream house. You came all the way from the Soviet Union, which is now Russia. You went from all these different countries, Sweden and Rome and, and, and Australia, and, and you find yourself in America. Now, you're married with your husband. You buy a few properties in real estate. You have two kids, right? Mm -hmm. And now you finally find your dream home at $1.3 million. You closed. You must be super excited. Oh, yeah. What is that house worth today? Just guess. Uh, well, people were have made offers. Four million. Four million. Mm -hmm. So again, you proved your husband and all the people who doubted you wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, with the mobile home, uh, with RV uh, place. At the yeah. same time, mm -hmm. I listened to my father-in-law, and actually, my husband helped me out too, just uh, uh, to set my mind. Got a mob, uh, mobile home park which has become RV, which is very, um, with even uh, with COVID, it's become- With COVID, very, very profitable. Uh, profitable. Yeah. And again, location, 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 okay? So here you are, you have invested with your family in a mm -hmm. mobile home, it's like a mobile Not home with park. with the family, well- Are you with family on this one? Uh, with the family, my father like 25% owns that, and uh, we have 75. 75% ownership. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you remember what you bought into this investment opportunity for? So we bought it for five million and just sold for twenty-three. Okay, now the audience is thinking, what in the hell? You bought it for five million. Mm -hmm. You s and how many acres is this? It's you like thirty acres. Thirty acres in Arizona. Mm -hmm. What city? Mesa. Okay, and so you and and you purchased it when what year was this where you paid five million that's like 10 years ago well my five million i paid like maybe five years ago but like a million i paid 10 years ago something like that because i had to buy it out the current owners who couldn't afford okay so it was kind of like a distress sale they were going yeah. they were had a little financial trouble yeah. you bought into it and now are you you're in contract or you are you guys closing soon we already did you close the deal for yeah. 23 million. Yeah. What do you plan on doing with that money? Are you going to keep investing in real estate or are you done at this point? I'll wait for two years right now. Because mm -hmm. you think the market's going to correct itself again? It's going to be. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. coming. It's coming. Okay. Yeah. Listen to Ira. It's She's coming. so smart. You know how to invest in real estate. You've done so well. And I appreciate you sharing your story with, a, mm -hmm. with our audience. Buy a piece of shit crap if you can, you can find right now. Uh, flip it over like anything, anything, just anything. Just buy buy the land, whatever. Uh, see the future and just go with your guts feeling. Mm -hmm. If you can afford, just don't buy, um, don't borrow and buy. I mean, make sure that you have. Um, Do some you homework. Make payments because yeah. I've saw I've seen so many people my age, younger age, older age, they have the dream but they don't have a stable job, mm -hmm. they don't have stable income, they don't have stable, co uh, uh, or they're divorcing and they go through hell. You know, just don't get married, don't have kids and you'll have money. <laughs> oh, that's a great advice for our audience because we've got an audience out there, young and old, that are, you know, all from, come from all different uh, demographics and financial you know, situation. Doesn't so. to me, it, it doesn't matter what nationality you are, what language you speak, what color you are, fuck it. Just prove them that you can do something. You know, it's in any culture. So it starts up here, get your it mind starts right. Your, yeah, set up your goal and uh, go work for two, in two jobs. I met a lot of um, uh, young guys. I, I, t I like to talk in the bar and uh, lots of young guys and go like, so you can see some people are really driven. They get master degree, um, PhD. They work two jobs. They catch up really. Don't spend money on something uh, useless like like I did in my uh, eight. When yeah, I, like, when you came into that money at well, seventeen. But, I, but yeah, but I, I couldn't do the. You you were limited there no, in the country. Okay, so you listen, li listen the people, the uh, elderly people that are doing well. That they're doing well. Mm -hmm. How they. Um, achieved in their life, whatever investments, and to flip the houses like you do, mm -hmm. it's tw twice faster, mm -hmm. and you have to be smart, you have to have a good crew, and people you trust, 
and know what the heck you're doing. First of all, like license, uh, um, city um, permits, also, they also for permits, architects and engineers. Architects. It, you yeah. have to learn that first uh, before you buy something because lots of people like in, um, I got the property in um, Hawaii and they have a lots of rules. Mm -hmm. Let's say Colina for the place I bought, mm -hmm. two properties. I bought the land there basically. Mm -hmm. I didn't lease it. But if you buy in Waikiki, you can go and buy really cheap uh, condo with the ocean view on the beach. Um, but it will be a lease. You're leasing the land. You're, you're leasing the land. You and if okay. you bought it from the owner who already owned it for 50 or 60 years, after 40 years, they will take it away from you. you oh, so it's a 40-year lease, and then it's gone. It's 100 years lease. A 100-year lease, okay. 100 year lease and a really high um, association fee. Yeah. So you really need to learn the rules. Well, to be an attorney is just like, you know. And that's what you ended up doing, you know, today. You're, you and your husband have a law firm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And and you specialize in what type of law? Injuries. Injuries. Mm -hmm. And people are always getting hurt on the job, so you never have a, a shortage of business, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you got hurt, call. Call Ida, right? Yes. Yeah. You even helped me on some of my legal situations, so you've been a great friend. You've been a great neighbor. I, I'm very grateful for, for our friendship, so thank you very much. What would you leave our audience with? How do you, I'm gonna let you close this, this segment out. Be, be industrious, spontaneous, listen older people, uh, save money, learn the rules and regulations, study before your next step, whatever step you make. And I would say real estate, yes. It's been good for you. Well, that's where I am right now, right? From Detroit. All the way from Detroit, Michigan. With my love. Wow, that is amazing. That is amazing. Bling, bling. Bling, bling, <laughs> yes. So, um, and you have two sons, right? Yes. What is your, a lot of people are motivated to not only do well for themselves, but also leave a legacy to their kids. So what do you hope your kids take away from your, your story? Uh, you and your husband? My brain. Your brain. Mm -hmm. Do they have your brain? The oldest one goes right now to law school. Okay, that's great. And he has a software company. He's already innovative, using his mind. Yes, and I always tell them about what the first home buyer, maybe like in a couple of years, I'll loan him some money and he can buy a house or property whatsoever. There you go. But of course, growing up in, um, in our family, and with a lot of real estate, they thought they will inherit everything. That's right. They're, they're waiting to be, they think they're millionaires already. Yeah. So how, what do you plan on doing with all that money? Are you going to give it to them? I'm going to spend it all. Uh, I'm Eric. <laughs> Did you all hear that? Wow, I think I've got a, I'm gonna take a new Eric. best friend. I'm Where are we going? I'm going to take Eric on a private jet. We're going to buy properties in Italy. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Let's go right now. Can we put these microphones down? Okay, I've got to pick up the kids at school at 3 o'clock, but we can go to Italy. Yeah. That works. Yeah. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll be doing another episode from Italy one of these days. Well, let's do that. <laughs> All friends. Mm -hmm. I know places. That's great. I really appreciate you sharing the story. Oh, Come and I saw a really nice property, actually, to purchase right now in uh, south of Huntington Beach. Mm -hmm. This was like um, for um, six units for... 1.5 million in honey that sounds like a bargain in, in california yes. yeah so let's go there well you have tons of money now you, you but what are you going to do you're going to you're going to reinvest in real estate in some form in some city some capacity you're going to go back to real estate it's yes, been great sure. to you yes you're not going to the stock market um maybe well my my child is really good in stocks and uh like five Current stocks doing very well. So you might give him a in, little more. In the clouds, mm -hmm. that's what we're going forward. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. it's, you have to uh, have diversity, like mm -hmm. stock, bonds, and real estate. Real estate, it's always, to have cash, it's losing. Mm -hmm. But real estate, it, again, I, I call 7777. Seven, seven, seven. His house, you, ha you, you have a number seven. I have a house. building. Yeah, I have a seven on my building. I have a seven on, on a lot of buildings that I own. Oh, yes. uh, I have a, um, I'm, um, 
I have a real um, Ritz Carlton residence, mm -hmm. and it's a 707, but the garage on the fourth street for my building is 77, and my house in Bay Farm is seven. So lucky seven. It's been good for you. So seven years of real estate, just path, seven, goes down, buy low, sell high. That is the lesson of the day. Ida, did I say your name right? Yes. Ida, thank you for coming on to the Divine Way TV and sharing your story. We have gone on for one hour, and I hope our audience enjoys this story. It learns from it and um, does something with this story and the lesson behind it. So stay I tuned. I, I hope I look good. Uh, you look just fine. Stay tuned. We have more special guests coming in <gasps> season two. Yes. So stay what, tuned. What is this season? This is, a, this is more of a podcast season where we sit down and do interviews with millionaires mm -hmm. and we do different segments to let our audience know because the difference, I think the biggest challenge for people who are, have not found success yet or who have not reached, made millions in, in life is they don't know how to connect the dots with the story. But when they hear your story coming to the United States with $300 in your pocket, not knowing English, landing in Detroit, finding your way to California, where you continue to invest, making a $23 million sale on an investment that you have 75% ownership in Arizona, you've done quite well for yourself. So, cheers. High five. <laughs> yes. Don't, right. don't trust people, though. Don't trust people. Don't trust the, the wrong people. The wrong people. Because there's lots of good people out there. There are good people. Mm -hmm. And that's how um, I make friends. I don't make friends on contract and the paper. It's only always a handshake. Yeah. It's always a handshake. But there's and you see, you have to see the person. You have to. And also, alcohol helps because um, when you sit down and if someone tied up said, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke. I don't party, and let's sign the contract because I don't really trust you. Mm -hmm. I don't. You don't mess with I those people. I don't, no. <laughs> so you'll continue to do business with alcoholics. Yes. All they, right. They're fun. They they have money. <laughs> All they right. Can afford. <laughs> well, thank you. We again, we we appreciate you coming on the show. This has been a great segment. I learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot as well. And stay tuned for our next episode. If you like our content, you can follow us on YouTube. Like, subscribe to our channel. We have lots of great lessons there. We're on Instagram. And if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can check us out at divinewaytv.com where we offer $500 an hour. Yes, consulting. So we can teach people out there how to become yes. millionaires yes. in real estate. And so. I told my son to talk to you too. I'll t Eric? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Eric's a, a fine young man and we'll catch up. Eric, I'll talk to you shortly. All right. Stay tuned for the next one. All right. Bye-bye. Good job.